an account, hardly a story, hardly a tale, for my great-great-grandchildren, if the world is still going and there are great-great-grandchildren about. During World War II, when it broke out in August 1939, <coughs> I was staying with some <coughs> friends of my father and stepmother, the Marsdens Medleys in Derbyshire, not far from Matlock. And the first thing that happened was that Mr. Marsden Smedley was called up by the army because he was in the territorials. And my father was recalled to London because he was still associated with the Royal Navy. And that left Agatha Marsden Smedley and Pamela Adams, my stepmother, and me, and two Marsden Smedley boys of my age, and two little tiny Marsden Smedley girls. And they lived in a nice eighteenth century house near Matlock, as I said. And the first thing we ladies had to do, I was sixteen and a half, was to make blackout curtains to put in all the windows because we expected air raids and that the lit windows at night would be an invitation to bombing. And then I went back to school and then I went up to Oxford. And in Oxford, oh, first I stayed with a Jewish family there the Moses, Ruth Moses had taught me German in a term to get a, oh, I forget what they were called, a school certificate, good pass. And her family, she and her mother and her sister, had been brought out of Germany by the Tree family. Jean Roundtree, who taught history at Down, together with a number of small Jewish girls. And their menfolk had just vanished, and so they left as soon as they could, which wasn't soon enough, really. Anyway, I stayed with the Moses family. And they were very nice to me and fed me their bacon ration and let me take part in their Friday night celebrations with candles around the dinner table. And then when I came down from Oxford, having glandular fever unfortunately, I was called up for the services and joined the Wrens but it was never going to be allowed to go abroad or anything interesting like that, or even apply to be an officer. And, 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 so first, during the summer, before being called up, I was rather surprisingly to find myself teaching schoolboys to drive tractors. I can't imagine how that happened because I didn't really know how to drive tractors and taught. But it was great fun, and I made some good friends. And then I w went into the Wrens and spent six weeks in Bradford being trained to do this and that in the Wrens to salute the right way to wear my hat properly, to wear thick black stockings. Nylons would have been wonderful, but that wasn't allowed at the time. And then I went and was a, worked in a drafting office, sending sailors to particular vessels. And there was one vessel, all the sailors on it, it was quite small, it was a little landing craft. All the sailors on it were called somebody Smith, 
because the commanding officer had made an, uh, an enemy, really an enemy of somebody in another drafting office. And so he was requesting a different crew if possible, so we let him have one. And then time passed and I went on another training course up in Blackpool and that was, I was <coughs> to become an education and vocational trainer. That is, I was to help sailors and friends decide what they might like to do when they came out of the services, if they wanted more education, etc. I was also the librarian, and we had Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten, HMS Royal Arthur, as we were called, and he came and asked me as a librarian to get him some books on, con on the British Constitution. And so we decided, me and my friends, that the engagement to Princess Elizabeth would shortly be announced. And this was indeed the case. He was much liked because he played mixed hockey so enthusiastically. And the Wrens appreciated this like anything. He was also very good looking. And then, and then, I came out of the Wrens. The war had finished by then, but we stayed in the services for another year or so. And I began applying for the, to join the Foreign Office. But then, <coughs> I'd met Wayland, and we rather liked each other, and then we rather liked each other even more and decided we'd like to get married and have a family. And there were no married women allowed to apply for the Foreign Office then. So the bad finished. I would have liked to have been in the Foreign Office. I think I'd have been quite good at it with good French and some German and been quite good at learning languages. So I married Wayland and we lived for a long time after that. We celebrated a 60th anniversary with a diamond wedding with a great party and six children and 11 grandchildren I think and one great grandchild. And then William died four years ago, and I miss him still and expect him to come in through the door. Thank you.